Hello, folks. Olympus and Atomos have recently released firmware, Olympus for the EM1X and EM1 Mark III, and Atomos for the Ninja 5, that allows for ProRes raw recording from the Olympus cameras. I happen to have access to an EM1 III and an Atomos Ninja 5, so I figured I'd test it out and give my thoughts on it. Keep in mind, I'm not an expert at cinematic footage and grading. I do like working with raw video, and I appreciate the flexibility it provides but I'm distinctly a hobbyist when it comes to this stuff, which will become obvious in a moment. This is actually my second go at making a video about this topic. This video will replace one I already made, but took down because I made a silly mistake and I didn't want anybody to be under any misconceptions due to my ignorance. ProRes RAW doesn't work with any of the video editors that I normally use. As far as I know, it only works with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro at this time. So my only option, because I don't have a Mac, was Premiere Pro, and I have very little experience with Premiere. In the original video, I commented that I was getting a massive overexposure and blown highlights in the imported video when it looked fine on the Atomos Ninja 5. I checked all the gamma and color settings on the Ninja, and I did some googling about how to potentially change the color space in Premiere, and I didn't come up with anything. I was able to bring back the highlights and correct the look through adjustments in Premiere, and the final results were fine, so I just rolled with it, and I explained in the video that the exposure on the Atomos wouldn't necessarily match the video once imported into Premiere. But an early commenter on the original video said that maybe I just needed to change the color space in Premiere. As soon as I read that, I knew there must be something I'd missed. So I started digging through settings in Premiere, and sure enough, I found the color space setting. Technically, there are no options specifically for the RAW files from the Olympus camera, but the N-Log setting is pretty close. It gives a much flatter image to start with than the default BT709 color space setting in Premiere. So there you have it. With the default settings in Premiere, you will get something you can make work, but it will take some extra adjustments and it will initially look nothing like it does on the Ninja display. But you can change the color space in Premiere Pro to one of the log settings, which will give you a very flat video that much more closely matches what you'll see while recording. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. When outputting raw video to the Ninja 5, the only option is ProRes RAW DCI 4K. When the Ninja detects the raw feed from the camera, it forces you to choose ProRes RAW. That's no big surprise, but just be aware that when you have the HDMI out on the camera set to raw, the only option on the Ninja will be ProRes RAW. So there's no option to take that, you know, higher bitrate video out of the camera and use something like ProRes 422 or a different RAW format. Also, there is a crop when recording RAW. When recording DCI 4K internally, it uses the full sensor, while the RAW output is a direct pixel readout and does not use the full sensor. It's not a massive crop, but it is big enough to be made aware of. Obviously, working with RAW video means large files. I don't think that's going to be a surprise to anyone, but there are no compressed modes or anything like that. So with a 500 gigabyte SSD on the Ninja 5, it estimates around 26 minutes of video. However, I did look at the average bit rates on a bunch of the files that I got out of this setup, and it looks like it ranges from between 75 to 100 megabytes per second. And that's just a rough average, but it makes it seem like a 500 gigabyte SSD should actually hold an hour or more of video. So the estimate on the Ninja seems to be very conservative. You can make changes to quick settings on the display on the camera like normal. But when you open the camera menu, the raw feed switches off and the menu actually shows up on the Atomos display. When you exit the menu, the raw feed comes back. It takes a couple seconds to go back and forth. The process overall has been pretty smooth, However, at one point, I switched to the camera menu, and when I exited the menu, the raw feed did not turn back on, the screen just stayed blank. I had to power cycle the camera to get the HDMI feedback. That only happened one time, and everything has worked perfectly fine otherwise. Sensor stabilization and autofocus continue to work normally when recording, which is really nice. Technically, there shouldn't be any record limits either, but that is always the case when recording externally over HDMI, not just exclusive to raw mode. There's definitely some dynamic range to be gained from the raw video versus shooting normal log internally, or when using the standard 8-bit HDMI output. The gains seem mostly to be had by exposing a bit high and recovering the highlights, unless you like noise. 
there is a good amount of room to recover highlights, but exposing low to preserve highlights, then bringing the shadows up in post is a recipe for terrible noise. In fact, even in good light at base ISO of 400, you will get some noise if you don't expose high and then bring the exposure down a bit in post. In other words, a properly exposed image has more noise than I expected. It's worst in the shadows, but it's present everywhere in the image. However, if you expose a bit high and bring the exposure down in post, you can get a clean image with reasonable dynamic range. This does make low light a bit tricky because, you know, you have to expose high and the light's already low to begin with, but I still think the final results can look pretty good. As an example, here are two shots with identical lighting. The first was recorded with what I would consider accurate exposure. The second was overexposed by a couple stops, then brought down in post. Here's a crop of the first video, and here's a crop of the overexposed video once the exposure was brought down in post. And here are a couple of still grabs from those clips side by side so that you can see just how much less noise is present in the overexposed and corrected shot. Keep in mind, I didn't apply any noise reduction to any of the samples in this video, including these two. Noise is simply a bit more prevalent in RAW versus video recorded in camera because there's automatic in-camera processing that reduces noise when recording internally. Speaking of in-camera processing, when you record RAW, you also lose the chromatic aberration and lens distortion correction that the camera normally does automatically. This is simply a result of recording RAW, and it's true of any camera. But I wanted to point it out for anyone considering this as their first foray into RAW recording. For instance, going back to the examples where I pointed out the crop, in the RAW shot, you can see that the wood of the feeder is bowing in the horizontal and vertical directions due to barrel distortion in the lens I was using. However, the direct from camera shot has straight lines. The direct from camera shot is wider due to the crop in RAW, but they were both recorded at the exact same spot with the same angle and the same lens. The difference is the camera automatically corrects for the distortion when recording internally. The severity of these issues will obviously vary with the lens, and they can often be reduced in post. But if you are used to video recorded in camera, don't be surprised if your first RAW video suddenly has barrel distortion or chromatic aberration, that you never saw from that lens before. And if after all that you're wondering why the heck anyone would actually want to record in RAW, the main thing is just going to come down to the ability to apply much more dramatic edits, much more dramatic grading, without the image just kind of falling apart. The main factor here is going to be the much higher bit depth of the file compared to the 8-bit file coming from the camera's internal recording. But also with the RAW data coming straight from the sensor, you're not dealing with any kind of basically internal editing that the camera itself does to the image that you then have to compete with if you want to, you know, make your own changes. And as just a really rough example to put that into perspective, you can take a raw image that looks like this and apply some pretty extreme changes to it and the image still has smooth color gradations in the sky and everything still looks pretty good. Whereas if you take a similarly shot, similarly exposed image with just the 8-bit output from the camera's internal recording and apply those same changes to it, you can see it starts to get blocky, you start to get artifacts, and it just the image just really starts to fall apart. Overall, there's not a lot more to say. The firmware updates from Atomos and Olympus are free, so if you have both and raw recording interests you, there's no reason not to install the updates. There is some dynamic range to be gained when shooting raw, and the RAW video is more flexible for grading and tweaking overall than the 8-bit files recorded in camera. It's not perfect. Noise shows up a bit at times. You lose the automatic in-camera lens corrections and noise reduction, and there's a slight crop. But if you want the ability to record RAW with excellent in-body image stabilization and good autofocus, the Atomos and Olympus combination now gives you that option. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like me to test out with this setup, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.